reaction number five, oxymercuration reactions. We have an alkene and mercuric acetate, HgOAC2, reacting in an aqueous tetrahydrofuran solvent mixture to produce a mercurium ion similar to the bromonium ion. This mercurium ion then reacts with water to produce an organomercury intermediate. Then, the organomercury intermediate is treated with NaBH4, which sloughs off the remaining mercuric acetate group to form the final product, an alcohol, just like we got from a hydration reaction. The OH group is attached to the more highly substituted carbon, which is what we'd predict, knowing Markovnikov's rule in all, the general chemical formula for an oxymercuration reaction is an alkene reacts with mercuric acetate and water in a tetrahydrofuran solvent to yield an organomercury intermediate. The organomercury intermediate is then treated with NaBH4 to yield the final product, which has a hydroxyl group attached to the more highly substituted carbon. But when scientists want an alcohol with the hydroxyl group added in anti-Markovnikov fashion, they use alkene addition reaction number six, the hydroboration oxidation reaction. In the hydroboration oxidation reaction, an alkene is treated with borane, BH3, to produce an alkane where the OH group is attached to the less substituted carbon of the original alkene double bond. As the Lewis acid, borane approaches the alkene double bond a positive charge begins to develop on the more highly substituted carbon. This encourages borane to simultaneously donate a hydride to the more substituted carbon. Hydrogen peroxide and a base are then added, and the boron-carbon bond is cleaved and replaced with an OH group. The net addition of H and OH to the double bond is syn, meaning they both end up on the same side of what was the double bond. The final product is an alcohol with the hydroxyl on the less substituted carbon. So, basic chemical reaction, alkene in the presence of BH3, forms an alkyl borane intermediate with boron on the less substituted carbon and hydrogen on the more substituted carbon. This alkyl borane intermediate is treated with hydrogen peroxide in a base to form an alcohol with hydroxyl on the less substituted carbon. Alkene addition reaction number seven hydrogenation reactions. We introduce some hydrogen gas to an alkene and a metal catalyst. The result is an alkane with two hydrogens added to the same side of the alkene double bond. We can also hydroxylate an alkene, which involves adding OH groups to the double bond of an alkene. In a hydroxylation reaction, two hydroxyl groups are added to an alkene by cold potassium permanganate, forming a 1,2-dialcohol or 1,2-diol. The two hydroxyl groups are added on the same side of the alkene double bond, which is syn addition. <sighs> now we're into a group of alkene oxidative cleavage reactions called, creatively, oxidative cleavage reactions. The first type of oxidative cleavage reaction involves an alkene and ozone, O3. Here's a really quick summary of alkene cleavage with ozone. The ozone cleaves the alkene double bond and produces, after treatment with zinc, two products, both of which contain carbonyl groups. The products of this oxidative cleavage reaction are either two ketones, a ketone and an aldehyde, two aldehydes, or a ketone and a formaldehyde, depending on how many substituents were on the alkene double bond before the reaction took place. Ow! Are we stopping now? Oh, no. There's no stopping. We're on a roll. We're going to keep moving. Let's move together. The second type of oxidative cleavage reaction involves an alkene and hot potassium permanganate. When an internal alkene is treated with hot potassium permanganate, the two products are a ketone and carboxylic acid. If the reactant alkene has a terminal double bond, however, the two products of oxidative cleavage with hot potassium permanganate are a ketone and carbon dioxide from carbonic acid. And that's it.